Hey there, this is Jeff. Welcome to TeacherCast University. In today's episode, we're going to talk to you a little bit about the Blueberry plugin from PowerPress, and I'm going to show you how to install it onto your WordPress to get your, po to get your podcast up and running. First thing that we're going to want to do is to go to our dashboard, and we're going to want to go to our plugin sections and add new. And from here, we're going to want to search plugins for PowerPress. And you'll see here that it is the first plugin that we have here. It looks like it's been downloaded 626,000 times. So we're going to want to hit the update button here. Or if you haven't installed it yet, you might want to hit the install button. All right, so here I am back in my dashboard with my PowerPress plugin already installed. You can see I have a few menu options here. Then we're going to get into a lot of these today. We have settings, migrate media, podcasting SEO. We can customize our audio and video player. And then we have a tools option. Let's take a look at what this is actually doing right out of the box. I'm going to click over here on new post. Okay, so here we are in our new test post. You can see right out of the box, PowerPress gives you an opportunity to put a new media URL. That's the actual address online for your podcast. We also can choose our file size and choose our duration, or PowerPress can auto-detect those for us. Let's go ahead and put a podcast URL right in here and see what that looks like on our post. Okay, so I've pasted in my MP3, which I got over from Lipson. And if you're looking to figure out how to use Lipson for your podcasting, I have a great video. I can put that in the show notes. And then I'm going to click over here to verify URL. And really what that's going to do is it's going to ping Lipson or wherever your podcast is to see if there's actually a media feed there. Oh, we're all green. Media verified successfully. I'm going to save the draft. And I'm going to preview the draft. And you can see here it has play in new window. You can download the episode. And when I click play, it automatically starts my podcast. Really simple, really easy to do. Those are the basics of PowerPress and how you can put your podcast on WordPress. But let's dive under the hood a little bit and go back to our dashboard and really see what kind of options we have here with PowerPress. Back here under PowerPress, I'm going to click on settings. And we have a couple modes here. We have a simple mode and an advanced mode. I always recommend switching over to advanced mode. You just get a lot more bang for your buck here. All right, so here we are in our advanced mode. You see we now have some tabs, basic settings, services and stats, media appearance, feeds, iTunes, and artwork. Let's look over here on basic settings. Now, right off the box here, we have a couple check marks. The first one here is checked off for media URL and media size. Now, maybe we want those, maybe we don't. Remember, that was the same thing that was uh, shown in our post. I'm going to deselect that because we really don't need to care about what our file size is or duration. At least it's not important to me or where we are at this point. I do want to have display player links options. Okay, we can have those here if we want links or not. That way you can link to the episode. Um, poster image, we can certainly put a poster image there. I can show you how to do that. Player width or height, these are all things that I leave unchecked. If we wanted to display our summary field, we certainly can. Maybe you have a podcast that has more than one author. You can have that checked off. But mostly I leave these whole things in the podcast entry options, pretty much standard the way it is. Over here on services and stats, we have an opportunity to sign up for Blueberry statistics. Now, I highly recommend these, um, and I'll be doing a video in a later episode of how to hook up to Blueberry and how to get your Blueberry podcasting stats and hostings from that. Let's click over here to media appearance. This is really going to show off what is it going to look like on the outside when you're actually looking at the website. Here we have it by default checked off, enable PowerPress media pl players and links. Or if we want to disable this, um, that basically means here PowerPress will not add any players to the links. We'll be having to use our short codes. Down here, display media and links if we wanted to have it below the content. And let's show you what that is again. Here we have our content and here the player automatically loads below all the content. If we want, we can have it above the page content. And if we have that set there, that means that the player is going to show up above this opening paragraph and that's going to happen automatically we don't have to worry about that at all or if we want we can display this or sorry disable this and do everything manually using the short codes i'll show you how that works too 
All right. So media player, we have checked off to display the player. We have display player and new link, display download link. Again, all of that stuff correlates to these windows right here. And so let's say we want it to include the file size, include the, the duration, include a link to embed. And all I'm just going to do is just save changes down here. I'll show you a few things real quick. And if I refresh this, now we have more options. Number one, we have it up on above. We have play in a new window. We have download. It shows us how long it is. So you can see here how this all gets customized. And we have the subscribe buttons. We'll talk about that a little bit later here. Let's keep going down here. We have our short codes. Now, if you didn't want to have your, your audio above or below, maybe you wanted it in the middle of your section, we can certainly add this short link here, power press with the brackets. And that would help us be very specific on where things are. Okay, going up here, a couple things that I might have missed. Subscribe page. I'm going to do a whole video on how to use this subscribe page. And this subscribe page here is going to correlate with these buttons here, this subscribe to iTunes and subscribe to RSS. So look for that soon over at educationalpodcasting.today. So if we wanted to certainly change our player, we can add a new player width, new player height. I don't really worry about any of this stuff. Let's come up here over to feeds. Now, I always recommend hit the button here for enhance all feeds. It is coming up as a default, and I really don't see the need to change anything on this here. Right here, feed settings is exactly what we're gonna be looking at here. We wanna have a new title for our feed. And our feed description. And show the most recent episodes. I like to leave this blank. I believe that you can have this up to 300. Maybe somebody can check me on that in the comments. But I right now, I'm just going to leave it blank. So that way, the, the blog default is 10. Do I want to feed episode maximizer? This is something new I really haven't had a chance to play with yet, but it says, do I want the latest 10 episodes in the feed to remain as normal? And the remaining 11 plus episodes will only have the bare essential tags. I don't know if I want to click on this one yet or not. Feed language by default. We have a number of languages here, but by default it is English. Copyright, I usually do 2015. Uh-oh. TeacherCast LLC. Um, I don't necessarily recommend checking this off. Uh, neither do they. Um, if you are using the Super Cash or Total Cash plugins, you might want to consider checking that or playing with that. Location is completely up to you. I don't put my location in. Um, and episode frequently, you really don't need to. You might want to say monthly or weekly or however you want to do that. Down here, we have our ratings. Ratings are interesting to use. Um, I would certainly recommend putting yours as no rating specified, but if you're doing an educational show, you might put something as G for general audience. Let's click up here over to iTunes. Now, if you're going directly from PowerPress into iTunes, this is where you're going to set things up. You're going to type in your subscription URL, which is where Apple gives you. Once you have your podcast into iTunes, Apple will give you this. You'll also put your iTunes program subtitle. So maybe I'll put here a great podcast for podcasting in the classroom. iTunes program summary. Maybe we'll put something like that. And again, these are what's going to show up in iTunes here iTunes episode summary. And then down here we have iTunes category. Now you have three options for here and I'm going to type in educational technology and then I want to have more. So I can have iTunes category two. I can do education K-12 and then maybe down here I can do educational training. Is this explicit? And you want to say no yes or clean. Now, a couple things here. No means absolutely no bad words, no no swear words, no nothing like that. Yes means yes, we've had a few. And you can certainly do this by episode. For instance, maybe you're doing a show for educators that has no bad words in it, but maybe on one of your episodes, something happens to get caught. You can have that switch per episode. And then clean is actually an interesting one. You would think that if your show has no bad words to it, you would be a clean show. But really what this was originally meant to be said was that a, let's say you had a show that had some bad words 
and then you went in and you edited it, and this is the clean version of that show. So maybe you have an episode 1A and an episode 1B. That's what this clean version would be. iTunes author name. You can have this checked off, and you can certainly change this each and every time you have a post. Or you can have the blog author's name for individual episodes. For instance, maybe you're doing a multi-author blog. iTunes email, we will put in. And that also gets shown on your iTunes feed and other feeds. So now we have everything here. Under artwork, this is something interesting because iTunes actually just came out with an announcement. It is now uh, March, late March of 2015 when I'm recording this. This one here says the image must be at least 14 by 100, but not exceed 2048 by 2048. And I believe um, iTunes just came out with a rule that says it can be up to 3,000 by 3,000 pixels. So double check whatever the latest standards are. If you have your, your artwork at 1,400 by 1,400, that is certainly good. And then I would recommend you putting that in here and then also putting that in the same thing here for the RSS2 image. And I usually end up checking off all of these buttons here. So that is the basics of how this is going to work. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to save changes to here. And we're going to go back into that test post. Now, after you already have a test post or you have created a post, you're not going to see the podcasting menu. You're actually going to see this podcast episode modify existing podcast episode. So I'm going to check this. And now you can see that there's not much more here because I took out a lot of those checkboxes here. The only thing I have is to put the media URL. Let's see what happens if we can update a few things here. All right, so back here in the dashboard, I clicked under PowerPress and over to Podcasting SEO. Now, this is a new feature, and this is really a fantastic feature, which allows you to do so much more with your SEO feeds. You can actually now have more than one title for your podcast. I'll show you a little bit about why this is important here. First of all, I want to click over here on Episode Titles, and it says Specify Custom Episode Titles for Podcasting Feeds absolutely put that one down and i always have feed episode title replaces post title now do i want to append the show's title to the episode right now it's coming up as the blog post title and then your custom episode i always check this off and then it says blog post title custom and then show title what happens if i wanted to have the custom episode title first then the blog then the show. And this is the one that I usually choose so I can have the custom episode title first. And then it says here, do I want schema.org audio objects? I don't really check this off. And do I want the video objects? I really don't check this off either. And then over here for iTunes SEO guidance, enable and highlight features that will help with iTunes SEO. Absolutely. So I'm going to save the changes for this. I'm going to come back over here into my post. And here we are in our post. I'm just going to hit refresh going to hit the modify button and you can see we have a lot more now. So what do we have here so far? Let's take a look at what we got. We have our post and I'm calling this test post. And usually for teacher cast, I have something like learn how to create a post using the PowerPress podcasting. That's an awful lot. And you're going to realize that once you're looking at your podcast on your say Apple podcast or even on iTunes, you just don't have a lot of categories for that. So under episode title, I'm going to create a custom episode title, which is just going to be called PowerPress plugin. So even though up here, this is the one that goes out onto Twitter and out onto Facebook, all of your different uh, social media things, learn how to use down here. When it gets to iTunes, it's just going to say PowerPress plugin, iTunes subtitle, learn how to use the PowerPress plugin and iTunes author. Maybe I can use my full name and that way really you're going to get two different kinds of SEO. You're going to have this here, which is going to be easy for people to search because in iTunes, they're not going to search for learn how to. They're just going to search on iTunes for PowerPress. And then up here under Twitter, this is going to be something conversational, how I usually do it. You know, learn how to or five great ways to or something that's going to grab people's attention. So I have all of this stuff set up and then I have over here save draft. The last thing that's important is we have to come up with our category and our category should be podcast. 
And so I'm going to add a new category, and that way PowerPress knows that it's going to be under the podcasting category. Now, when I hit Finish and Publish, and then I come back over here to my front page, and then I click on Refresh, you see here I have my test post. Everything here is up on top. I haven't yet set up my subscribe buttons. Again, I'm going to do that in another video. And then over here I have all of my podcast stats. If I wanted to download this, I know I'm downloading a 13 meg file. If I wanted to play this in a new window, it'll open up a brand new window. And there is my PowerPress player. Now, there's certainly a lot more to PowerPress, and we will certainly take some time over the next few episodes here to dive into each of these little buttons and how it works. And I guess, of course, we're going to talk about the subscribe button. But if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out. Feedback at teachercast.net. Love to help you. Congratulations on setting up your first podcast using PowerPress and WordPress. And in our next episode, we're going to be talking about how to take your feed from WordPress put it into something called PodTrack to get some feeds. And this is all part of our series of how do you go from the editing room through Libsyn, through WordPress, and then into iTunes. I hope you liked this video and found it helpful. If you did, click on the like button below and leave us a comment. If you wish to receive more videos from TeacherCast, please click the subscribe button on the top left of this video box and visit TeacherCast.net for more information about podcasting and other great educational tools. Don't forget to catch the TeacherCast podcast live every Sunday night at 7 p.m. as we bring you the Tech Educator Podcast on TeacherCast.tv.